Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Many people don't understand that AI that's out there right now. And I'm not claiming to be a genius or, or an expert on it. But even I would know that this is an incorrect use of it. So George sent me notes. So Steve, check this out. Headline from The Independent and Josh Marcus. Texas professor misuses chat GPT and fails most of the class, accusing them of AI plagiarism. So you might say, well, Steve, if people are using chat GPT to like write essays for them, that would be a violation of the academic code of conduct in most schools, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, it would be. It would be. But the question is, can you use chat GPT to identify the work of chat GPT? And I don't think anybody's ever said you could. And so the idea that you can simply ask this thing anything and it'll give you the correct answer, it'll give you an answer. But so will a magic eight ball. So an instructor at Texas A&M misused AI to claim that large parts of his class were cheating on assignments, and this has imperiled their degrees. Now, this is somebody who knows a student there, but it turns out that there is more going on here. The professor teaches agricultural classes, reportedly sent students an email informing large parts of the class they'd be getting a zero on recent assignments because he had tested their writing with ChatGTP and the AI program claimed to have written them all. So the allegation here is that the professor got a piece of writing and asked ChatGPT, did you write this? And apparently it said, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And so you're assuming that ChatGPT is actually telling you the truth, okay? So we're talking about a program called ChatGPT made by a company called OpenAI. And the professor's email said, I copy and paste your responses in ChatGPT, and it will tell me if the program generated the content. And that's uh, from an interview in Rolling Stone magazine by somebody who's familiar with this. The instructor, when confronted with evidence from students that they had written their own papers, reportedly said, quote, I don't grade AI BS, and BS is spelled out, the full word. Open AI, as well as outside observers, have noted that chat GPT is not fully reliable at detecting when a text is written by AI. The program can also be made with little encouragement to make entirely false claims, going so far as to fabricate primary sources. So there have been people who've asked it to write a paper on something, and then they say, okay, and cite your sources. And it cites a bunch of sources. And then if you go and check the sources, they don't exist. It just thought, well, I need, I need sources. I'll make some up. And so chat GPT is not working within the same moral framework that you and I might be. And also, when you show it something, go, did you write this? I don't know if it keeps track of everything it's written, considering how much stuff it's been asked to write. But... Apparently, instead, it simply reviews what's in front of it and then says yes or no. Based on what? Well, apparently not based on whether it actually wrote it. The Independent contacted the professor for comment, and Texas A&M told PC Magazine it was aware of the issues in this class and is investigating. Now, they've said no students failed the class or were barred from graduating as a result of the issue. The professor is working with students to determine whether AI was used to write their assignments, and if so, at what level. The diplomas, however, will remain on hold until individual investigations are completed. Now, powerful AI tools like ChatGPT have set off heated debates in academic circles about academic freedom, plagiarism, and fairness. Some institutions, like the New York City public school system, have proactively banned these tools. Others argue that AI can be viewed as another electronic aid in the classroom, like a digital academic database, or even a calculator. So, you know, it's, it's a fascinating concept. And I've been impressed by some of the stuff that I've seen people do with that. But I did a video about this a while back because somebody had run three questions through ChatGPT and sent me the questions and the answers. And the questions were, what is Michigan's lemon law? What do I do if I've got a lemon? And can you help me with that? And the answer on what Michigan's Lemon Law is pretty good. 
what you should do if you've got a lemon was pretty much completely wrong. And then can you help me with that, of course, was just as wrong because it tried taking you down the path of its second answer. And so that's a problem. But also, I think it's actually kind of interesting that a professor at a university would assume that a device, whatever you want to call it, program, whatever, that, that there is this entity that someone created that generates language. That's what it does. It just generates language. Generates interesting language, and, 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 and the language construction is quite impressive, but it generates language. So I think it's interesting that a professor would say, oh, I can ask it if it wrote something, and it will tell me the truth. And who said it would do that? That's, that's kind of strange. That's kind of strange. And uh, somebody else sent me one <laughs> where they asked ChatGPT, who is Steve Leto? Who is Steve Leto? Now, interestingly, there are several Steve Latos uh, that I know about. Uh, one of them is a musician in Minnesota. One of them is a mathematician in the Northwest. And one is a mid-level manager at a corporation someplace down near St. Louis. Those are the ones I know about. But there's actually a few others. There's a few others. Um, and, and so somebody asked, who is Steve Leto? And I think they may have said, who is Steve Leto from YouTube or something like that. And it got most of the answer correct because I'm sure it went out and just grabbed information off of sites that, you know, like, like my bio appears in connection to every book I've written on publisher websites, right? My website itself contains information about me. And so the information is out there. And so it gathers up all this information, and it got the bulk of it right. You know, Steve Leto is an attorney from Michigan. And I don't have what it printed out in front of me, but I know that it got a couple things completely wrong, where it apparently just made something up. And what it made up that I remember was... I often mention all of the different places that I've spoken uh, and the different news sources I've appeared on or been quoted by. So I often jokingly tell people that I'm one of the rare people out there who has appeared on the BBC, CNN, and been quoted by the New York Times. So th those, are, those are three biggies in the news industry. The New York Times, CNN, and the BBC. Okay, so that would appear in a couple different places where I've mentioned that. And it said, so Steve Leto is an attorney in Michigan, specializes in lemon law, and he's appeared on. And they gave a bunch of places, including some I've never been on. <laughs> Apparently, ChatGPT thought, well, hey, this guy's been on a bunch of media sites. Let's just add a few more here and pad out his resume for him, which <laughs> I don't know why it would do that. But then again, that's the problem. We're attributing intent to it. Why does it do anything? Well, it's a program, and we're not privy to how it's been programmed. So, like I said earlier, it's just a language generator. It's just, it's, it's spitting out language. And I've seen some really good examples of stuff it's done, and I've seen some pretty bad examples where it actually stated things that were false. As they pointed out in the one article, I think it was the Washington Post, where they asked it to write, in essence, a scholarly paper and cite its sources. And they look at it and they go, wow, that looks good. Let's check the sources. Oh, it made those up. <laughs> and so obviously, when asked to generate language, it hasn't been constrained to, oh, don't make stuff up, apparently. And so when a professor takes a sample of somebody's writing and, and feeds it into chat GPT with the prompt, did you write this? says yes, whether or not it did, apparently. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's possible that all these people cheated also. And chat GPT could be completely right. But the problem is, even the makers of chat GPT say this is not an appropriate use for this. Now, I have heard that there are people out there working on programs to detect the use of chat GPT, but it's not chat GPT itself. Okay? So we'll see what that comes up with over the next few months and years, I suppose. But Josh Marcus wrote this, The Independent. And I'll tell you right now, I taught classes. I taught uh, history, Michigan history, the University of Detroit Mercy's uh, main campus uh, for a couple of years. And I had students write things and hand them in. And um, 
I, I think I would have spotted if somebody had handed in something written with chat GPT, but I don't know. I, I can't guarantee that. So I'd, I'd be curious about that. And if I was a professor, I'd be worried about it also. So I don't blame the professor for being concerned, but I do blame him for misusing this. Because as the headline points out from The Independent and Josh Marcus, Texas professor misuses chat GPT and fails most of his class, accusing them of AI plagiarism. And George sent that. Thanks a lot. Questions, your comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. I have an answering machine in my car. It says, I'm home now, but leave a message and I'll call when I'm out.